Hello. Hi. I'm Eric. I'm Linda. And we're reading through the Bible in a year. And we're now at day 153. And we're reading in 2 Chronicles in the Old Testament. And chapter 17 and 18. And then we will be in the New Testament. John chapter 13 verses 1 to 20. Um, we're going to open in prayer. So, Father in heaven, we thank you once again for the privilege of reading your word. Um, Lord, we just had fellowship with uh, two other couples over supper tonight, and we had a really good time, and we talked about a lot of things, and we talked about you too, and it was good to share. And Lord, it's good to share your word as well. And so, Lord, we are uploading onto YouTube and the blogger and uh, Facebook. And so, Lord, we pray that as we read your word, that it will be shared with many other people too. And we thank you for this opportunity in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jehoshaphat, his son, succeeded him as king and strengthened himself against Israel. He stationed troops on all the fortified cities of Judah and put garrisons in Judah and in the towns of Ephraim that his father Esau had captured. The Lord was with Jehoshaphat because in his early years he walked in the way his father David had followed. He did not consult the Baals, but sought the God of his father and followed his commands rather than practicing, uh, rather than the practices of Israel. The Lord established kingdom, Therefore, the kingdom Lord's under his control. And all Judah brought gifts to Jehoshaphat, so that he had great wealth and honor. His heart was devoted to the ways of the Lord. Furthermore, he removed the high places and the Asherah poles from Judah. Finally, he removed them. Chapter verse 7. Also in the third year of his reign, he <coughs> sent to his princes, even to ben Hala, to Obadiah, and to Zechariah, and to Nathaniel and to Micaiah, to teach in the cities of Judah. And with them he sent Levites, even Shemaiah, and Nathaniel, and Zebadiah, and Ashiel, and Shemiramoth, and Jehoathan, and Adonijah, and to Abijah, and to Tobadonijah, Levites, and with them Elishama and Jehoaram priests, and they taught in Judah, and had the book of the law in the Lord with them, and went about throughout all the cities of Judah, and taught the people. Verse 10. The fear of the Lord fell on all the kingdoms of the lands surrounding Judah, so that they did not make war with Jehoshaphat. Some Philistines brought Jehoshaphat gifts and silver as tribute, and the Arabs brought him flocks, 7,700 rams, and 7,700 goats. Jehoshaphat became more and more powerful. He built forts and store cities in Judah, and had large supplies in the towns of Judah. He also kept experienced fighting men in Jerusalem. Their enrollment by families was as follows. From Judah, commanders of units of 1,000, Adna, the commander with 300,000 fighting men. Next, Jehohanna, the commander with 280,000. Next, Amasiah, son of Zikro, Zikrio, Zikri, who volunteered himself for the service of the Lord with 200,000. From Benjamin, Eliada, a valiant man with 200,000 men armed with bows and shields. Next, Jehozabad, with 180,000 men armed with, for battle. These were the men who served the king, besides those he stationed in the fortified cities throughout Judah. Chapter, Chapter 18. 18. Now Jehoshaphat had riches and honor in abundance and joint affinity with Ahab. And after a certain years, he went down to Ahab to Samaria, and Ahab killed sheep and oxen for him in abundance and for the people that he had with him, and persuaded him to go up with him to Ramoth of Gilead. And Ahab king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat king of Judah, Wilt thou go with me to Ramoth Gilead? 
And he answered him, I am as thou art, and my people are as thy people, and we will be with thee in war. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. And therefore the king of Israel gathered together of prophets four hundred men, and said unto them, Shall we go to Ram Gilead to battle, or shall we forbear? And they said, Go up, for God will deliver it into the king's hands. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, there is yet one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him, for he never prophesies good unto me, but always evil. The same is Micah, the son of Imla. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. The king of Israel called for one of his officers and said, Fetch quickly Micah, the son of Imla. Imla. And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, sat either of them on his throne, clothed in their robes. And they sat in a void place in the entering of the gate of Samaria, and all the prophets prophesied before them. Verse 10. <clears throat> now Zedekiah, son of Canana, had made iron horns, and he declared, This is what the Lord says, With these you will gore the Amarian, the what do you call it? Assyrians in your book? The Arameans? Uh, until they are destroyed. Yeah. Yeah. All the other prophets were prophesying the same thing. Attack Ramoth Gilead and be victorious, they said, for the Lord will give it into the king's hand. The messenger who had gone to summon Micaiah said to him, Look, as one man, the other prophets are predicting success for the king. Let your word agree with theirs and speak favorably. But Micaiah said, As sure as the Lord lives, I can tell him only what my God says. When he arrived, the king asked him, Micaiah, shall we go to war against Ramoth Gilead, or shall I refrain? Attack and be victorious, he answered, for they will be given into your hand. The king said to him, How many times must I make you swear to tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? Then Micaiah answered, I saw all Israel scattered on the hills like sheep without a shepherd. And the Lord said, These people have no master. Let each one go home in peace. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Didn't I tell you that he never prophesies anything of good about me, but only bad? Micaiah continued, Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne with all the hosts of heaven standing on his right and on his left. And the Lord said, Who will attack Ahab, king of Israel? Who will entice Ahab, king of Israel, into attacking Ramoth Gilead and going to his death there? One suggested this and another that. Finally, a spirit came forward, stood before the Lord, and said, I will entice him. By what means? the Lord answered. I will go and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets, he said. You will succeed in enticing him, said the Lord. Go and do it. Verse 22. Okay, now <clears throat> therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of these thy prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil against thee. Then Zedekiah, the son of Chenana, came near and smart Micah upon the cheek, and said, Which way went the spirit of the Lord for me to speak unto thee? And Micah said, Behold, thou shalt see on that day, when thou shalt go into an inner chamber to hide thyself. Then the king of Israel said, Take ye Micah, and carry him back to Ammon, and the governor of the cities, and to Josh the king of son, king's son. And say thus, thus saith the king, Put this fellow in the prison, and feed him with bread of affliction, and with water of affliction, until I return in peace. And Micah said, If thou certainly return in peace, then hath not the Lord spoken by me. And he said, Hearken, all ye people. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, went up to Ramoth Gilead. Now I'm wondering why Jehoshaphat went up, because he was serving God. Why would he not listen? And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and go up to the battle, put, but put thou on thy robes. So the king of Israel disguised himself, and they went to the battle.
Now the king of Syria had commanded the captains of the chariots that were with him, saying, Fight ye not with small or great, save only with the king of Israel. And it came to pass, when the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat, that they said, It is the king of Israel, and therefore they compassed about him to fight. But Jehoshaphat cried out, and the Lord helped him, and God moved them to depart from him. For it came to pass that when the captain of the chariots perceived that it was not the king of Israel, they turned back again from pursuing him. And a certain man drew a bow at a venture and smote the king of Israel between the joints of the harness. And therefore he said to his chariot man, Turn thine hand, that thou mightst carry me out of the host, for I am wounded. And the battle increased that day, howbeit the king of Israel stayed himself up in his chariot against the Syrians until the even, and about the time of the sun going down, he died. And I guess the prophet will get out of jail. No, he said, if I keep him there till I return safely. I know, but. <laughs> so now turn to the New Testament and look for the book of John, and we're going to read from chapter 13. It's your turn to start. And we're going to read all the way to 20. Jesus washes his disciples' feet. It was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. The evening meal was being, was being served, and the devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he went up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped the towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you, you have no part with me. Then, Lord, Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, A person who has had a bath needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. Verse 11. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore he said he, Ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet, and had taken his garments, and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me Master and Lord, and yes, say well, for I am so. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. Verse 18. I am not referring to all of you. I know those I have chosen, but this is to fulfill the, fulfill the scriptures. He who shares my bread has lifted up his heel against me. I am telling you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe that I am he. I tell you the truth. Whoever accepts anyone I send accepts me, and whoever accepts me accepts the one who sent me. That's the ending of today's reading. Lots to think about, eh? Yeah. And what we're really seeing is how important it is to call upon the Lord. And it's interesting that even when the king was surrounded and his doom was at hand, he called to God and they turned and left. And at, he says they just shot the air random, the arrow randomly. And it went phew, right through that bad king's heart. And yet, same time, Jehoshaphat, who was down in the battle, had gone with him, even though the prophet said no. He cried out to God and God Redeemed protected him. him. Yeah. Well, it's getting dark, so it's time for us to say our prayer. And bid you farewell for another day. Thanks for joining us. And we just leave a blessing. God bless you and yes. peace be on you. Heavenly Father, thank you again for an opportunity to share your gospel. May it land in good ears and bring forth good fruit. We pray in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Amen. So good night. Be blessed, and we will oh, see you. Excuse me.